your buddy Peace and Harmony here with you today. I had a viewer inquire about the covert narcissist and to go a little bit more in depth with that uh, personality type, that narcissistic uh, sub subcategory, so much of what we hear about and see about is uh, the overt narcissist, uh, the one that is obviously a narcissist, the one that is outwardly charming, outwardly good looking, um, extremely intelligent, driving the fast cars, they've got the big title at work, they've got the big house, um, everything is all about them. It's pretty obvious. I mean, the guy, you know, driving super fast down the highway in the red Lamborghini and, you know, the $20,000 watch on, you know, the guy who, you know, feels he's at the top of the food chain. That is your overt narcissist. It's obvious. They're aggressive. It's all about them. They're not shy at all. They're, you know, they can be extremely aggressive, demanding, and everything is all about them. And oftentimes they just have a reign of people who support them in, in, their, in their illusion. So that is the um, overt narcissist. Now the covert narcissist um, is one who is usually um, very down key, low key, unassumptive, um, very, I don't want to say shy, but I want to say more quiet because shy is really indicating that they're, you know, um, they're very insecure about themselves or that they have kind of a, a social inadequacy, which the overt narcissist does, but it's more of a quietness. It's more of a hidden, uh, more of a hidden demeanor. Um, they might not dress in very flashy tones. They might dress in very subdued tones. Um, they outwardly maybe seem to be very um, disinterested or very uh, lacking in self-awareness. Um, they might dress, you know, kind of uncoordinated clothes. They might seem so uh, laid back, um, very unaggressive, unanxious. And it's usually these qualities, these uh, very low-key sort of qualities that attract you to these type of people because they do, they seem so um, easygoing, maybe easy to uh, easy to easy to get along with at first. Um, and uh, these people, you know, really kind of want to be out of the limelight. They they don't maybe garner a lot of attention, and so you feel, you know very comfortable around these people because they don't seem to re require a lot maybe in the beginning. And um, as you kind of get to know them a little bit, you realize that there's maybe a neediness about them. And you find that you're very easily able to take care of them because uh, maybe they just, they can't dress themselves or, you know, they might have a good job, but they don't really have, you know, they might have a lot of money in the bank, but they don't have like a lot of belongings in their house. Or they just, you know, don't have this really strong, confident presence, even though they're intelligent. It's more of a, um, uh, I want to say like a hidden or subtle intelligence. So um, when you first meet them and you start, you know, getting to know them, you might find that spark is at first very attractive. And um, they are very surreptitious, meaning um, they don't really need um, to be approved of. You know, they're not really looking for approval. They're not look, really looking for that sort of support. Um, really, they, it kind of, it tends to reveal itself in time. And, um, you know, they, they seem kind of vulnerable, meek. Uh, kind of mouse-like where they just kind of, you know, they just kind of creep around. They don't really have this very maybe aggressive personality style. They're very passive and generally very quiet, very uncommunicative so that they're really just kind of like, um, you know, in the corner, in the closet a little bit. And really their self-interest becomes more in what they allow to have happen than what they actually physically do. 
um, the core of them is almost like um, a baby that you would see crying. You know, you just want to pick them up, hold them, coddle them. You know, you want to, you know, take care of them. And your first initial impression is, wow, like this guy is like a fixer upper. Like I can do a lot here. Like I can keep myself busy. This would be a great relationship. Um, you know, I can put together all of our social engagements. I can uh, cook for him. I can keep our calendar busy. He will provide for me and, you know, I'll just really kind of take the leadership role, even though it seems backwards. You know, if this guy is a male, um, you know, he's providing in a specific way, but kind of lacking in another couple of ways, which we'll see in a moment. Um, and, you know, you eventually begin to think, well, this is what love is all about. It's just this, and it, you know, it seems to strike this immediate perfect puzzle piece fit sort of situation where, oh, I, you know, I can, I can do this. I've got this. I can uh, be this and this for this person. I can be their caregiver. I can, you know, clean their house. I can do their laundry and I can uh, raise the kids single-handedly and, you know, I can also keep a job. I can really impress him and the relationship, you know, seems to kind of take flight in that respect. Um, but what you don't realize is that oftentimes, you know, you're putting them on an unconscious pedestal. And why this becomes um, overt, or I'm sorry, covert or hidden is because their self-interest is, is hidden. It's very, uh, they're very, they're like a sly, it's a very sort of uh, stealthy, sly sort of uh, way that it comes about and it becomes di uh, discovered because there's nothing appearing on the surface that would make them seem selfish, selfish or manipulative or dangerous or harmful in any way. Um, they're so passive, but where it really starts end up, ends up happening is when you start fitting into the role of taking care of them to such a degree, degree that um, you be, end up getting lost, your voice ends up getting lost in the process, and it's what they allow to happen, and what they allow to happen to the people in their circle of influence. In other words, you know, you can take care of me to such an extent that I will allow you to basically lose yourself in taking care of me. I will allow you to put me at the center of your world because well, you seem to be happy doing this. And meanwhile, you don't really need to um, go and fulfill certain areas of your life because you're fulfilling areas of my life for me. And it's a very unsettling because you really do think that this is what love is about. Um, and they, they don't really... Um, when, when they have you kind of wrapped around their finger, they don't genuinely kind of acknowledge you and give you outward credit, which is what a healthy relationship would be. Um, where they're opening, opening, you know, openly acknowledging you um, for the, the kindness and the good that you've done, um, but more so they permit people to over-obligate themselves. In other words, sacrifice where they should be going in their life for them. Um, and it's very, it's very, it's almost like a very parent-child relationship where it's almost like the reverse is happening. Um, the, the covert narcissist is like a parent who allows the child to take care of them. It should really be the other way around. And the roles end up getting reversed. And, um, there's, it, it becomes more of a deficit in what they give to people, which is their abuse. In other words, it's their lack of communication. It's their lack of acknowledgement. It's their lack of guidance. It is um, their lack of interest in you that really is at the core of an overt narcissistic abuse. It's very subtle, but it is no less dangerous. It is um, almost like an indescript or unseen to the human eye. It's very uh, difficult to pinpoint, but it's more in the deficit, neglect, 
and lack of what they do that is so hurtful and what is so, you know, depriving of what is needed in a relationship. And oftentimes, you know, a covert narcissist, which, you know, and an overt narcissist, I think would, would make a good partner because, you know, they're, you know, but then they're probably both going to be, you know, knocking heads because, well, unless it's a, uh, a functional dynamic of narcissism, um, almost like the Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, you know, they're both narcissists in their own ways. And so that, that relationship worked, but now that is starting to crumble. Probably because it's not coming from a sense of genuine caring, it's coming from an ulterior narcissistic self-satisfying motive, which really will not bear the test of time. Um, so what, what happens is the narcissist will kind of see that you're depriving yourself or, you know, you're self-sacrificing, you know, running yourself down for them, and they will continue to expect that until you put an end to it. Um, and basically, that is a very maladaptive sort of relationship dynamic. And, you know, you need to have equal representation in relationship. And it seems like it was maybe in the old school days, what they say, when a man was a man and a woman is a woman. Um, you know, maybe those those days work, but I think, you know, in those days when it's like, the you know, the man would have the job and the woman would take care of the house, at least, you know, in that healthy situation, the woman was um, not discredited for the work that she did. Um, but in overt, um, I'm sorry, a covert narcissist, they don't seem to give that same recognition or acknowledgement in respect to the needs of the relationship that would be warranted. So more on this in future videos, very interesting topic and it's definitely worth understanding. Even though it's very subtle in nature, it's no less dangerous and no less um, toxic and hurtful to endure. Peace and harmony here with you here today. Please share, subscribe to these videos for more great tools, help and discussion. Make it a beautiful day.